Twitch has been at the center of this internet drama that keeps getting crazier and crazier every single day. It just seems like every day something comes out to one up the previous day and the drama keeps unfolding. But Twitch as an entire platform is now having problems and facing problems with their new policy update. So first they took a W on the internet when everyone was kind of supporting them and happy with what they did, which was banning gambling on Twitch or at least sponsored gambling and non-regulated stuff. They took that step. The internet was pretty happy. A lot of people supported this and said, you know, wow, Twitch actually did something, didn't expect this to happen and was kind of celebrating it. And Twitch, not used to getting that kind of uh, information or that kind of feedback, they decided to immediately release some of the worst policy change that they're doing. And that was this, where they announced that they were going to restructure everyone's revenue splits for their subs. A lot of the top streamers and guys are on 70-30 uh, contracts, so 70% of the revenue they keep, 30% goes to Twitch for running the platform. And they announced that they're going to get rid of that completely, bring everything back down to 50-50 splits across the board, and just go from there. So you see, they said, when we first established a 50-50 revenue share split, it was to signal that we're in this together. You all do the amazing work you do to create great content, engage with your audience, and grow your communities. On our side of the partnership, it's our responsibility to make continuous investments in the products and people that make your growth possible. So breaking that down, they really don't do too much in investments, and we're going to go over what they see as their investments shortly. But with this 50-50 split, a lot of people outraged over this. I don't really get it. I think YouTube is 70-30 when you're streaming for memberships. So when someone subscribes or the subscrib subscription equivalent for YouTube, they get 70-30 splits for everyone on YouTube. Uh, I don't think you have a special deal for that. It's just what they do. But YouTube's ad model that they do for like the entire site is 50-50. When you look at your YouTube dashboard, if you're running ads and can run ads, you take the number you have and double it. And that's the number you actually made. But YouTube takes 50%. So a lot of people freaking out that Twitch is 50-50 and it's somehow like this blasphemous thing and it's so ridiculous. I think they kind of are valid in that with YouTube doing that model. The only thing is... A lot of people obviously compare streaming parts of it. So the streaming part of YouTube is still 70-30 where what Twitch is doing with their uh, subscription model is bringing it down to 50-50. That's where a lot of people are outraged. And for some of the investments that Twitch says that they've made, a lot of them don't really matter. Like no one really cares about them. You can see here they say investments like these are paying off for streamers, products like Prime Subs, community gifting, hype trains, and the ads incentives program, to name a few, have driven an increase of 27% more streamer revenue per viewer hour every year over the last five years. So the investments they listed, Prime Subs, definitely a big one. Not super a lot of innovation putting in up in there like they didn't have to construct all this stuff they basically went to their parent company amazon and are paying money from amazon to streamers and people can sub for free if you have prime so it's not like they really did too much there they just went to their parent company and said let's make a deal to try and you know grow kind of revenue and they're taking money out of Amazon, putting it into Twitch, and everyone kind of gets a win-win. Revenue goes up for Twitch, the streamers make more money, and the viewers get a free sub to whatever streamer they want every month. So a lot of people win, but really not too much innovation going there as they're just taking money from Amazon. Community gifting, that's a big one. Gifting subs and stuff, if that's what they're talking about here, massively big. Good on them. Uh, I think that, you know, that was probably the best innovation on this list if they want to count on their investments that they made. That one, definitely a good one. But the last two, hype trains, I mean, no one cares. No one cares at all about hype trains and the ads incentives program to throw that in there to kind of make it sound like it's such a good thing when literally no streamer wants ads to run while they are streaming because they're extremely in-your-face ads and it's not even like one or two ads. There's six ads that play. A lot of people, get, you get four, six, seven ads that'll play. You get two, three minutes worth of ads. And during that time, you're missing the content that is going on on Twitch. I know we've all seen it. If you're watching Twitch, a 
It's clutch moment in someone's stream and you'll get popped up with ads and you'll have six ads to sit through and by the time they're over you've missed the whole thing so to throw that one in there where the streamers are don't like it the viewers don't like it no one likes it except for twitch because that's how they can grow their revenue and their ad model and the final thing they have in this update is talking about how expensive it is to run twitch and they're a little disingenuous with how they're talking about the numbers they said lastly we have to talk about the cost of our service delivering high definition low latency all Always available live video to nearly every corner of the world is expensive using the published rates from Amazon Web Services interactive video service, which is essentially Twitch video. Live video costs for a 100 CCU streamer who streams 200 hours a month are more than $1,000 per month. We don't typically talk about this because frankly, you shouldn't have to think about it. We'd rather you focus on doing what you do best, but to fully answer the question of why not 70-30, ignoring the high cost of delivering the Twitch service would have meant giving you an incomplete answer. So a couple things here that are a little disingenuous, not super true, and one of those things is this right here of them talking about the Amazon Web Services, uh, you know, talking about how much it costs to run the server farm that Amazon runs for them, that for these numbers, they're using the published rates for Amazon Web Services because they get a special rate. It's an Amazon company. Twitch is owned by Amazon. They get a special rate to go off of the Amazon servers, just like YouTube does for Google. YouTube gets a preferred preferential rate to the Google servers and farms than what Twitch would get to Amazon. This is a similar thing. So saying the published rates is being a little misleading because you don't pay the published rates. You definitely have a special rate that you don't want to talk about and disclose because it's cheaper than what you're putting out here. And another thing saying for a streamer who streams 100 concurrent viewers, so that's CCU, concurrent viewers, uh, streams 200 hours a month is more than $1,000. I don't think there's many streamers at all who are streaming to 100 viewers who are doing it for 200 hours a month. If you're streaming to 100 viewers, chances are you're probably doing it on the side, part-time, and trying to maybe make it a side hustle and someday kind of make it out there, but you can't put 200 hours a month into streaming because you more than likely have a full-time job that you're making money with to do to make money and the twitch stream is just your side hustle part-time kind of fun thing just even put that in perspective even more a full-time job would be 160 hours a month and that is adding 40 more hours a month to a hundred viewer stream it's just it doesn't make sense it's not there's maybe a handful of people on the entire platform who are streaming to a hundred viewers doing it 200 hours a month. And the reason this big policy move is going to be such a massive problem for Twitch or could end up being a massive problem is Twitch is massively top heavy. And the viewers from the top streamers don't really trickle down to lower view count uh, streamers basically ever. Like the biggest streamers, they have the concurrent viewership, they have the watch time. And then once you go below them, it's really not there. So the big problem Twitch could have is that these big streamers, if they get mad enough and say, I'm not dealing with this, I'll go to YouTube where the revenue split is better and I can do everything that Twitch can do and just have it better that way, then you have a big problem if the big creators leave. You can see this is live hours watched on Twitch. The top 5,000 channels make up almost three fourths of all watch time on the platform. And this is 2019 data. So I would say it's worse than this. It's probably closer to 80%, 90% for the top 5,000 channels. And the lower rest of Twitch, they just don't get that watch time. The viewership sticks at the top and it doesn't come down. When the viewers who are watching their favorite streamers like XQC or something with 50,000 viewers, when XQC gets off, those streamers don't go to lower count streamers. Maybe they go to other higher streamers if they're live or completely shift platforms and just go watch YouTube or something. So the viewers aren't trickling down. And if your big creators leave, then you're done. The viewers already don't trickle down. So if the big streamers leave, the viewers will probably leave with them. You can see just how little it takes on Twitch to be a top 10% and top percent streamer. You see this, uh, this tweet's a little old from 2021, but 
talks about if you average more than six viewers, you're in the top 6.7% of Twitch. 11 or more, you're in the top 3.1%. And if you want to be in the top 1%, all you need is 51 or more viewers on Twitch. So you don't need some ridiculous 10,000 viewers to be top 1%. It's 51 viewers. That just shows how many people are streaming on Twitch and how little people actually have a viewership. Because you look at the big guys that have 50,000, 60,000, 20,000, and think that that's the top echelon, but they're the 0.001%. To be top 1%, 51 viewers. That's all it takes. And also for Twitch as a platform, if you look at their growth, and a lot of companies are going through this, but especially looking at Twitch, you can see the explosion of growth in 2020 to be expected. Everything exploded in growth for like online stuff. YouTube exploded, Twitch exploded, the watch time, everything blew up. But you see it going hyperbolic here, kind of falling down, leveling off, and then recently falling off even more. So from August to September, you can see 1.9 billion hours watched in August, down to 1.3 billion in September. But you see it even from here at the tops, 2.3 billion down a billion hours, basically, from the peak here. So starting to move down. And you can even more see this on this right here. If you look at 2022, it is just... It, look, it is nose diving. This chart is absolutely nose diving. The watch time on Twitch going down, especially in 2022, is hitting very lower lows. And it's just a little bit of stunted growth, which could be completely expected because 2020 was an absolute boom in growth for a lot of places. And this is what a lot of places are experiencing. But Twitch, if their policies keep going forward that are self-destructive, pushing top creators out, they could be pushing themselves to collapse as a platform. So do we think Twitch is going to collapse in a year or two years? Probably not. They're a massive company or they're backed by one of the biggest companies in the world, Amazon. So Amazon obviously doesn't want Twitch to fail. It doesn't want Twitch to be a burning hole in their pocket money-wise. Pretty much wants Twitch to be break-even so that they don't have massive losses on the book, but they want that platform to be there. So Amazon backing it, very good for Twitch. Uh, I think they're probably going to need to get more better management, new management in there to shake things up and try and get things going again because the path that they're going down is just more or less pushing the top creators out. And the more they do that, the more viewers they push out because we know those viewers are not trickling down. They're not going to smaller creators. Chances are if people like XQC and Pokimane and these top creators left the platform, went to YouTube, the viewers would leave with them. But that's gonna do it for this video, guys. As always, don't just smash the like button and subscribe. Run the road to 1,000 subscribers. I'll see you guys in my next video.